The government of Belize has added 30 grocery items to its supplies control list. These items include but are not limited to butter, baby cereal, a wide variety of cornflakes or cereals, chicken sausage, corned beef, and certain vegetable items and personal hygiene products. It is with pleasure that I speak on the decision made by Cabinet recently to expand the basic food basket of regulated food items from only nine to a comprehensive 43 items. This initiative, Madam Speaker, aims to help to alleviate the burden of the high cost of living on our Belizean people. As we all are all aware, the cost of living around the world has been a pressing concern, and Belize is no exception. The $5 minimum wage has helped over 30,000 of our Belizean people. But the rising cost of living is at our doorstep every day. Many families struggle to make ends meet, particularly when it comes to putting food on the table. And the rising prices of essential food items has eroded the purchasing power of households and has put a strain on their overall well-being. It is our duty, I believe, as representatives of the people to address the issue and find practical solutions that will make a positive impact on their daily lives. And this, Madam Speaker, is what our government is seeking to do. So what does this mean for consumers? We asked Lennox Nicholson, the controller of supplies at the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security. Under these regulations, there has always been a set of goods that were subject to government control, uh, basically establishing a maximum percentage markup. What has happened is that in previous time, we used to get quite a bit of complaints from the public on the price of specific goods, for instance, maybe corned beef, or Milo, and so on. And basically, we were not able to address those concerns. We were not able to intervene in the market with respect to those products simply because they were not covered by the scope of the regulations, right? So cabinet took a decision to expand the list of goods that are subject to regulations. And this would be the, the list that has been mentioned, some 30 other items added. Adding these 30 items to the supplies control list places constraints on the markup that businesses are allowed to charge with those items. There's a maximum percentage markup wholesale of 25% that is allowed so that whatever the purchase cost, whatever the wholesaler would have, or in the, in the case of some entities, the importer would have brought that product into the country. They are allowed to mark up 25% before they sell that to the supermarket, right? The supermarket in turn, with respect to these goods that are the, the new items that are on the list, are allowed to mark up 15% from there. So basically that is how it works. So when we visit an establishment, we would look at the retail price that is being offered to the public. We would get the invoice or the receipt that they use to purchase that product and we would do our calculation to see what the markup is. And that would give us an indication whether or not they are within, um, within the, 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 the scope of the regulations. This regulation will apply to these 30 items across the country. Currently, the control of supplies and his team are visiting retailers and wholesalers to inform them what the expectations are under the new regulations. This morning, one officer visited a grocery store on Farber's Road Extension in Belize City where a number of infractions were observed. For one, the retailer did not have prices on the goods. Secondly, a receipt was not provided to the customer. And if you look at this product, a standard chicken sausage. You, you notice the problem with this item is that there is no price on it. So how does the consumer know what they're being charged for this product? Similar, no price. Okay? No price. This is a violation under the regulations. So this would be, this would result in us issuing a ticket. 
Retailers can also be ticketed if they are unable to provide invoices or receipts of the items they purchased from a wholesaler. They are required to provide those invoices and receipts to us. We have no jurisdiction over anything having to do with taxes. Our sole jurisdiction has to do with ensuring th that these regulations are complied with. And what we're doing, we're studying the market, trying to track the goods through the different stages of the, of the supply, supply chain and the um, distribution mechanism. And we're having some very interesting findings um, in Belmopan, this set of goods, at two comparable, two establishments of comparable size, there was a price disparity of about 15% between them. And the one that was 15% higher, one less item was in the basket. Wow. Right? So what we need to do is to establish, I can't say conclusively there is gouging anywhere. We need to look at the invoices, we need to look at um, certain other factors to make a determination. Nicholson says his team also found that while most of these goods are landed in Belize City, the prices they paid in Belize City are more expensive than in Belmopan, which is 50 miles away. According to Nicholson, the government has approved additional resources for his unit, including more inspectors. Now, you can't be at all places at all times, but you need to be in sufficient places enough times to give them pause. That is your role, you know. Your concern is not the 85% of establishments who will comply because of competitive forces. Your concentration has to be on that 15% who perhaps want to do the right thing, but need a little bit of encouragement, and that is where the ticketing will, will, will come in. Reporting for News 5, I am Paul Lopez.